Chronicle chapter 3. <clears throat> For behold, in those days, continue from chapter 2, the chapter markings are something that's been added to the Bible, and they're not something to be messed with. But sometimes you got to realize when, when you go from one chapter to another, you're just continuing on. There's not a break. And I don't want to say throw the chapters out there in the verse mark. They help you very much. Instead of saying, you know, open up your, your Bibles to page 487, halfway down the column, left side, 400th sentence down. And they help. But there are some chapters where, you know, it, it, it's broken, and yet the subject is not broken. Now, I'm not going to say they're inspired by God when the Bible is written, but they're inspired. You check out the Bible 316s. You check out the, the 666s. You check out the verse 13s. There's something to it. Now, I'm not going to mess with them. But when it says, For behold, in those days, we're talking about continuation from chapter 2. And in that time, what we read in chapter 2, when I shall begin again the captivity of Judah in Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations. Second Chronicles 20, 21 to 26, Zechariah 13, 8 through 9. You thought the United Nations was just something. Here they are in the Bible. You think unity. We're all going to get together. And God says, just keep on thinking like that, because yes, you are. And you know what? It's not for color. It's not for race. It's not for religion. It's because I have already said in my word, you're going to be gathered together. And they don't even know it in the Bible. People do things that God has already said and God has already said, and they have no idea. Do you think those wise men knew that they were predicted in the Bible? I will gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Let's look at my notes here. I find my notes here. And will plead with them. Therefore, my people. And for my heritage, Israel. So this is a future event of Armageddon. And God says, I will plead with them for my people, my heritage, Israel. How can you get up as an organization, as a church, or as a group of people and say, God's all finished with the Jew? Do you realize when you say something like that, you have not read your Bible? This is all future. And in the future, they are God's people. Whom they, the, the Gentiles, the nations, have scattered among the nations and parted my land. This is future, Daniel 11.39. That land of Israel, that land of God is going to be split. And it's not going to be for the Jews. We're going to see in a few moments. And they have cast lots, kind of gambling, choose straws, rolled dice, black marble, gets the highest card number. They have cast lots for my people, Jews. Why? Wasn't lots cast for Jesus' garment? You say, well, that's Roman soldiers. Maybe the Jews gave it to them. But they're going to they're going to put Jews up on a stand. And they're going to have some kind of gambling device. To take the people. And have given a boy. For a harlot, a Jewish boy. They have paid 
for a prostitute. Leviticus 19.29. Hey, I got this Jewish boy there. Hey, Mr. Pimp, you got that whore there? Yeah. I'll take that whore for the night you, for, this, for this Jewish boy. Okay. I brought it up to modern English. So this boy, this Jewish boy, becomes a, 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 a slave, a servant to the pimp. I mean, he has a harlot. Harlot's family. Who's ever in charge of her gets the boy. And sold a girl, a Jewish girl, for wine. Imagine, bring the Bible up today, a guy walks into a package store, he's got a little girl with him, he picks out his booze, and he walks up to the cash register, and he rings it up, and he takes the girl, plops her down on the counter, and walks off. And go gets drunk. In the package store, okay, go clean those shelves, go stock those shelves, go clean out the toilets, straighten everything out. This is what's going to happen. This is future. And we're talking about Jewish people. We're not talking about colored people. We're talking about God's people. You see why one of the reasons why that line, the tribe of Judah, is angry when he comes back? Not only have they rejected him, not only does he curse those that would not help the Jews, what about the ones that takes a Jewish boy and Jewish girl and sells them? How about that one? Doesn't John chapter 1 say it's his brethren? You don't want to mess with God's family. And this is God's family. And since Abraham said, I will curse them that curse you. So what would be the value of a Jewish boy and a Jewish girl in the future? Sex and alcohol. How's that? Did I bring it up to date enough for you? The depravity of man. For his lustful things, I'll give you a Jewish child. You know what the Jewish children had been throughout the history? In Egypt, the boys were, were told to be killed. Keep the girls alive. I don't know why. I'm not going to do any sex. But, but keep the girls alive. What about when Herod, when Jesus was born? Kill all those under, I forget what age it was. What about when Judah was in Jerusalem taken captivity in Daniel 1? Here, take them all and, and rededicate their lives to Babylonian God worship. Take the Jewishness out of them. I wonder how many children suffered under the SS of Jewish. You know, they made a market of Jewish items, hair, skin, teeth. I believe there were lampshades that were sold with Jewish skin. I, I may be wrong on that. If a Jew had gold in his teeth, they'd knock it out of his mouth to get it. And it's going to happen again. Why? Because they have rejected Jesus Christ, their Messiah. That's how serious Jesus is. That's how serious we preach on the streets about the gospel. How Christ came to save you. We ain't messing. This ain't no light thing. And the Jews are not doing what God told them to do. Yea. And what have ye to do with me? God saying this. Old Tyre and Zidon and all the coast of Philistine or Palestine. God's talking to the nation. What are you going to do with me? You've been calling me Allah. You've been calling me Mary. You've been calling me Papa John. What do you have that you don't even know who I am? You've been calling me Dagon. Call me all kinds of names. If you don't think there's gods out there, get yourself to the library or bookstore and you can find a paperback book about this thick of just the Roman gods, males and females. The Gentiles do not know who God is.
So what do you think when, you, when you're when you dealing with people who are lost on the street? Oh, I'm saved. Oh, I'm a Christian. Really? Do you know what being a Christian is? Do you know what honor and, and loyalty and royalty that that Christian title is placed? Or is it just a name you've been throwing around in the newspapers, in the media? The world hates the Jews. Therefore, God hates them. Will you render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me, swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own? God's taking it personally. And he does that quite often in the Bible. When Paul is persecuting and killing Christians, God says, you persecuted me. When you do something to the Jewish people, when you do something to a Christian, you are doing it to God. And you don't even know it. There are people who are going to make it in the in the in the millennium by what their conduct is to the Jews, and they have no idea what they did. By visiting, helping, and aiding the Jews, and they don't even know. Because ye have taken my silver from the temple. Found that all through the, the kings of Judah. They're scraping the, the gold off the doors to make alliances. But you have taken my silver and my gold. And have carried it into your temples. My goodly pleasant things. 1 Samuel 5 2. Now that your temples implies that you taken it from me, my temple, and you brought it to your own temple, like they did with Dagon in the Ark of the Covenant. They stolen what was God's. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, sown men. This is future people. In the future, the Bible states that men are going to be taken captive and they're going to be sold for something. You're not going to end it. Only Jesus Christ will end that by sitting on David's throne. And ye might remove them far from their border, out of their homeland. The world is going to drive the Jews. You think they're in the land now. They're going to be driven out. Again. According to the Bible. Wouldn't it be interesting if we saw in our time before the rapture. And I don't know. Let me say I don't know. I can throw this in the garbage can. But wouldn't it be interesting if we saw the United Nations get moved over there to the Middle East. Wouldn't that be an interesting little prophecy historical event? They pick up from New York <coughs> and move to the Middle East. I don't know. Just something to throw in the air. I'm not saying they're going to. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them. And will return your recompense on your own hand. Head, excuse me. Be not deceived. God's not mocked whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. And I will curse them that curse you. God says, go ahead and do it. But you wait to the day of reckoning. Ezekiel 36, Ezekiel 37, Revelation 19, Matthew 25. Chapters. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah. So, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse number 30, 29. And also upon the servants, upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. 
You know the law allowed a Jew to have Gentile servants? There were a group of people that came to Joshua and lied to him, and they became the servants, water drawers, and wood hewers. Into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabines. So even further. Not only sell them to the Jews, the Jews are going to make money by selling them. To a people far off. For the Lord has spoken it. All right. Is this going to happen? Did God say it? If God said it, guess what's going to happen? You can open up the Bible in the future and open the book, chapter, and verse. There it is. You ain't going to change God. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. All right. Here's a message to the Gentiles. This is, well, I was going to say this is us, but I'm not a Gentile. I'm a Christian. Prepare war. Now, what's the Catholic Church have to do with thou shalt not kill and talking about war? God is love. The, the Jehovah Witnesses, well, we, we can't be... Uh, put into the military service because the Bible says thou shalt not kill and God said prepare war it's got to be a difference between thou shalt not kill and war when David told I mean God told David go and kill them all when God told Joshua go in there and kill them all men and women ugly and even the animals and thou shalt take Achan and destroy his entire family by rocking them all to sleep. Then he tells you if a man hates a man promiscuously and, and takes a weapon, you got to understand what, what the difference between murder and killing. It's simple. Then you got to understand that there's a third, there's always a three. There's an accidental killing. You had no idea it was going to happen. Oops. I don't really mean to put oops. Wake up. Somebody must be asleep. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Three world wars are yet to come. At least three of them, according to the Bible. And you got an intergalactic, well, I don't know, interheavenly war with Michael versus Satan. You can't say world peace and read your Bible until the Lord Jesus Christ comes. And after the thousand years and Satan's loose from his prison, he gathers an army. God wipes him completely out, but he gathers an army. After a thousand year reign of peace, and after a thousand year reign with Lord Jesus Christ, after a thousand year reign of no, of no curses, and Satan's yet to build up an army. Beat your plowshares into swords. Micah 4 3, Isaiah 2 4. The other place said, Beat your swords and the plowshare. Here is, take those plowshares and make them weapons. And your pruning horse into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves. United Assembly. And come, all ye heathen. And gather yourselves together round about. Thither, cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, and Revelation 19. Here comes us. The people come up, we come down. Let the heathen be weakened. And come in up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. 
And there will I, God, sit to judge all the heathen round about. Matthew 25, 31, Ezekiel 1, and I think that's 10. Or I will sit and judge. That's the Lord Jesus Christ again. I've so, said so much about the Jehovah Witnesses. God said I will judge, and it's Jesus Christ. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, from the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Matthew 4, I mean, excuse me, Revelation 14, 16, 1 Corinthians 15, 21. His visitor was dipped in the blood. It ain't talking about crops here, it's talking about the people. Multitudes. How many is that? Multitudes. How much is that? That's a number you can't even count. In the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near. That's, remember about the day of the Lord we've been talking about. Here comes the Lord. The day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. This, this is summing up to make sure you know what it is. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. You got the reference? And the stars shall withdraw their shining. So a great question would be on any game show television of trivia. At least name one big war that's coming up. The one right before the Lord Jesus Christ comes. And they gather themselves all together and then the lights get turned out. How do you like that one? You know what they found out with tank warfare? Tank warfare is very great, but in the winter they're not so good. There have been armies rolling around in Europe and in Asia. Who roamed the grounds and the paths and all that and died because they didn't have enough food. You imagine these people here they here they come, they're gathering up, they're ready to fight, they're going to do it, and all the lights get turned out. Boom. Wouldn't that put a that put an end to your battle plan? The Lord also shall roar. What animal roars? Out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. There he is. He's already made the trip, picked up the Jews, traveled up the, the King's Highway, crossed the Jordan River as Joshua did, and is now in Jerusalem. If you read about the cities in the Bibles that we read, where they looked back and they saw the smoke of their city and they just lost all ambition and all things. You know, the Antichrist is just to turn around. Oh, there's Jesus. There's God. They lost. And the heavens, plural, and the earth shall shake. Keep seeing that. For the heathen will be shaking and baking. But the Lord will bring the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel, not Gentiles, not nations. He's coming to deliver the Jews, chapter 2, verse 32. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion. How? By what we read in this book. Not us as Christians. How are we going to know that the Lord is God? Well, we've been judged at the judgment seat of Christ. We've had crowns put on us. We've had the new body. We've already tested the body. It don't suffer death no more. It don't get no more ouches when we get a sword in us. We've already. It's for the Jew. 
Jesus is coming riding in to Jerusalem, not on a mule, but on a horse. Not only has he conquered the, the Roman government, but he has conquered the Antichrist. Now, is that not a Hosanna? And you ain't going to stand him before any emperor, and you ain't going to stand him to put him on any cross again. That's what the Jews wanted in Jesus' time. They wanted Jesus to conquer the Roman government and put them on the world of all the worlds, but they've already had a prideful heart. They've already had envy. They're already in their wickedness. The lamb had to die. Yeah, lots of, so shall you know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy. Then, not now. Don't call it a holy city today. It ain't. We're going to do a holy city tour. No, you're not. I'll take that holy tour of that city with Jesus Christ on horseback. There shall no strangers pass through her anymore. No religions will be walking around in Jerusalem. Religion is gone. Religion's been damned. Religion's been condemned. Religion's been cast off. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life is there. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain shall drop down new wine and the hills shall flow with milk and all the rivers of Jordan shall flow with waters. Not during the tribulation period it wasn't. We read that in chapter 2. And the fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord and shall water the valley of Shittim. And we, I believe we read that in Ezekiel. There's a water that's going to come out, a river that's coming out from the throne, from the temple. There it is. Joel backed up Ezekiel and Ezekiel backed up Joel. Egypt shall be a desolation. And Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah. Now look what God said that Edom is how they treated Judah. Violence. Because they have shed innocent blood in their land. Edom has crossed the border to kill Jews. But Judah shall dwell forever. And Jerusalem from generation to generation. Leviticus 23.13. Amos 9.15. Does this sound like God's done with them? For I will cleanse their blood. That I have not cleansed. His blood be upon us. And upon our children. God has never forgiven them for that yet. For the Lord. I look at his present tense. But yet it's not yet. You know how Lord. You know how God is assured of his word. This hasn't happened yet. For the Lord dwelleth in Zion. An atheist could pick up the, that verse right there and say, See that? God's a liar. He don't dwell in Zion. Yeah. Not yet. Uh, you believe that? That's exactly what faith is. You know how much you're supposed to put faith in the Word of God? It's not that the rapture will take me to heaven. What did Paul say? I am already seated in heavenly places. Your faith is supposed to be with something that's going to happen in the future. 
It's going to ha it has already happened. That's fake. That's how strong the Word of God is. It's not going to happen. It's already happened. And God has already seen the, the future from the past. He's seen it in reverse. And God is so sure of himself that he puts in black and white. How many Bibles are there that has Joel 3, verse 21, that says, For the Lord dwelleth in Zion, and if yet, if the Lord did not ever will dwell in Zion, there are three passages in the Bible that says God cannot, will not, is unable to lie. He just told you right there that he is the truth. It will happen. Define faith. You already believe what God said would happen has already happened. That's faith. The blessed hope is not, oh, I hope it's going to happen. Oh, I hope it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. That's faith. 